Hey guys, so I have a special edition today of fluid art and this is watercolor. This is my goddess series. If you've been following me on Instagram or Facebook in my Facebook group, you've been seeing some of these paintings I've been doing lately. And I wanted to show you how I created at least one of them and uh, the elements for some of the others. So look at this whole series, it's really fun. This is all mixed media, watercolor, mostly on uh, watercolor paper. Now the watercolor paper I'm using is by Arteza. It's the 11 by 14, 140 pound. Uh, it has two sides, a textured side and a smooth side. So you can kind of choose which one you want. The links to the products are in the description box below. And you can also get a discount if you use Heather Mater Art 15 at checkout. And that's a 10% off. Uh, your whole order. Now I, I really love this paper. They don't have this size particularly right now, but they do have the smaller size. And then I put it on a piece of gator board and I really like this because it's basically foam with um, an acrylic paper on the outside and then I use this pro artist tape because I like the way it sticks but it doesn't stick to the paper. So you kind of get a secure uh, finish. It puts a nice border around everything and I really do like that. And I'm also in love with my Arteza Caddy. This thing is amazing and I've used the crap out of it. Seriously, I just love this thing. It keeps everything all in one place when I want to carry it from my studio to my office, which I, I do paint in here quite a bit because the light is nice. Now, the Karen de Ash watercolor pencils. These are absolutely gorgeous. This is the Museum Aquarelles um, soft watercolor pencils. They're really really amazing and I love it and that's how I did a lot of the detail work on these uh, goddess paintings because I'm not an amazing drawer okay so I'm still sort of learning how to draw but that's how I got a lot of the details in the hair and everything now for the shimmer the shimmery part, see the little shimmers that you're seeing all throughout these pieces like that? That, my friends, is the Arteza Metallic watercolors. Look how shimmery. And I just love, see the green there? Everything, all that is meta uh, the Metallics by Arteza. And these last forever, so I'm just, uh, you know, I just really love this set and I have probably painted like 30 paintings and they still have so much paint in the pans. I love all of the iridescent quality. Now I made this paper using the metallic watercolors and then, you know, you'll see how this gets incorporated into my mixed media pieces, but look how shiny it is. It's like a homemade paper. And then I used it for her dress and I created her dress with that along with uh, the metallic highlights that you see in her hair and on her body. That's all the Artezas. And then I used some of the paper to create her scarf and the beautiful metallic gold that you see there on this one, this lady. Now, today we're going to focus on this one, this goddess right here. The reason being she's the only one that got filmed. And you can see I'm not a great portrait artist. This is not my strength, but I think it's important for us to try new things and to push ourselves as artists. So I'm trying this out. I used the watercolor pencils, the Karen de Ash aquarelles to define her face, her features and give her some character. I made some little impressionistic flowers in her hair. That's also how I got the color of her hair as well, is by using those pencils and then just brushing some water over them. And I broke out my gel pens. You know, I love these white gel pens by Arteza. These are ones that you've seen me use several times in my alcoholing pieces and other pieces, so some of my favorites, but they do add just like a little highlight and really help, you know, make your eye believe that that was a flower. So 
those little impressionistic flowers. You know, I think the important thing I want to say here is to try and enjoy the process of something new. And that really is what this whole series was about for me. Um, uh, in addition to having an arm injury, I have a rotator cuff tear. Uh, these were just easy on my arm versus painting. So it gave me an opportunity to be creative. You gotta think outside the box sometimes so you can still express your creativity, even if you have an injury or something like that. So now this uh, fine line bottle is masking fluid. It's a liquid fluid that turns solid once it dries and basically it creates a moisture barrier wherever you put it so it avoids um, I'm sorry it it basically repels water or liquids so anywhere that I put that I'm gonna be able to basically have a line between those two like if I want to protect something I just put a line of that masking fluid now I'm gonna show you where that comes into play just a little bit later I think it's important that you experiment at times and try not to be very regimented. Every one of these pieces was started a different way. This one was started with just that red flower. I love that piece of paper and I was trying to figure out how to build a whole painting just around that one piece of paper and that's how she was created. Sometimes I started with the hair first and with her, I just did the hair and then the face came in the background and finally I ended up painting her flowers last. This chiffon goddess uh, ended up having beautiful pink, gray, metallic hair and her dress. And sometimes I'm not sure where I'm gonna go. And that's why it's, you know, there's some easy ways to try things out, like for example, Look at her dress. I covered it up with some homemade paper that I made just to see if that might look better. And I ended up going with the original that I painted, but you just never know. Like this one, I just felt like she was missing something. So I made some little paper flowers and I messed around with like the placement. Um, I used my phone app to draw. And I thought some musical notes might be really cool in her hair. So that's one way to try something out before and then you can see if you like it at the end. It's a great way to try it and not ruin your final piece. And here she is, the musical goddess. All those notes just wrapped around her. So you should experiment and have fun when you're doing these projects. Make sure to remember that. Um, I decided to go with some beautiful decoupage paper for the background. Now, even though I originally put that masking fluid line around there thinking I was going to do something fluid, but this paper kept calling my name. So the paper one out and that's fine you can change up right in the middle of a project just go with the flow go with the energy that's happening so the best way to do this is to outline your uh, lady and then cut out the outline with a very sharp box cutter or exacto knife and what you end up with is something like this Ta-da! <laughs> Yep. Now the masking fluid was not necessary now that I decided in the middle of my project to go with something different, but that's totally okay. Still gonna actually end up being helpful and I'm gonna show you how. Now, in previous videos I used glue for this decoupage paper and it, it works fine, but someone suggested, actually a viewer suggested that I try using a, uh, oh my gosh, a matte medium. So I use golden matte medium. It worked great instead of glue and I really liked the way uh, it went on. It was easy to work with and I was already available. So 
that might be a good option for you instead of blue. The little tint that you're seeing there is actually just from my water. So my matte medium is pretty old, so it's a little thick. I've been just adding a tiny little bit of water to it. Now, the one thing I do want to caution, if you get that matte medium on top of your, let's say your lady, the hair or her shoulder or whatever, it's going to resist paint from that point forward. So, um, it can even leave like a shiny texture so just be careful when you're going around the edges there it doesn't have to be perfect but it will resist the paint and then I just make my way all the way around careful not to leave a lot of it under there I notice it really will cause a lot of um, you can actually see some of the brush strokes if you don't smooth it out a bit so and then I just make my way around now Lightly score, but do not cut through your project if you want a cleaner edge there. Or if you make a mistake, you can always go back. Let it dry. I made the mistake of not letting it dry, and <laughs> I think it could have been a little smoother. Now, alcohol ink on watercolor paper. This was a big question for me, and I did not know if it would work, but I decided to try and see. Normally when you use alcohol inks you want a paper that really resists moisture. Now this is where that moisture barrier, that masking fluid, is going to come into play. I actually had considered that it was going to protect the outside from the inside, you know, the opposite of what I'm doing, but um, what this is doing is protecting the alcohol and the alcohol inks from the outside paper and so I just put a layer of alcohol ink down and some pinata brass and some color some pigment there and now I'm just attempting to create maybe um, a dress or some kind of robe or something and I just wanted it to be pretty I wanted it to have gold in it highlights and some texture and possibly bring out some of her flowers so I love the way it's looking and as the alcohol dries at first it looks like it might leave a little stain there but as it's drying it's actually looking really nice and I was quite impressed with that and how that turned out You can see how the alcohol is rolling right to that masking fluid border but not bleeding into the paper and so that masking fluid border actually ends up being a blessing in disguise and after I'm done with this part I just roll it off I don't have that part on camera but basically you just roll it off it's real easy now if you like this please subscribe if you like what you see and share. Sharing is a great way to support this channel as well as shopping in my Amazon shop. I appreciate each one of you who does that each month. Uh, donating to this channel with a little donation and buying art. Those are great ways to also support this channel if you like these kind of videos. I have had very 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 few I think last month only one donation to my channel so I really would appreciate it if you guys like seeing these type of videos and you want to continue seeing more uh, please feel free to drop a tip it can be a dollar <laughs> it can be two dollars um, but I really do appreciate the donations and all of the support so now I love the way this piece is coming along and now as soon as I remove that masking fluid border there's gonna be a white space and the white space I end up filling off camera with some blue paint that matches the border and then I did some little embellishments here and there now I'm just bringing some of that same alcohol ink color into her face her lips the flowers so see how that just really brightened up her face and now she you know definitely is matchy matchy <laughs> so oh, that's some good camera work there Heather but I just was trying to show some of that pretty 
bling right there. And the exciting news is she's been picked up by the Gold Leaf and Altar Gallery. There she is on the wall there, along with a couple of the other goddesses. It's very exciting to see them being shown in a gallery. Very humbling and exciting. So, um, I like how she turned out. See, I filled in all the white spaces, took away the masking fluid, and embellished her gown just to make it a little bit more regal. Now, if you haven't joined me on Instagram, Heather made her art, you should. I've been doing some fun things there, like this q and is coming up with Sarah Taylor on Friday at noon, and the Facebook group, Inspired Art with Heather Mater, is a fun place to hang out as well. So I hope to see you soon, and as always, I can't wait to make more art videos just for you. Thanks guys, bye bye.